Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry as I continue my search for historical knowledge found here on the internet. All right, today we are returning to a channel favorite and that is the Sam Anella Academy. And the video we're gonna check out is Exotic Animals in Ancient Rome. So the first question I had going into this was, were they going to talk about animals that were native to the Roman Empire that were maybe rare or animals that were imported? Um, I know one thing that was happening with like the gladiatorial games was they would get these uh, uh, exotic foreign animals to come in um, to be a part of the gladiator games, which of course led to so much death and destruction. But that the fact that they had brought in these animals from different parts of the world uh, to make the games more entertaining that way. So I'm definitely excited to check that out. The original video is down below, so make sure you uh, click that, give it the view and the support, the like, all that great stuff. Definitely sub to Sam Manel Academy if you like history and he's a funny dude. So we'll check this out in just a second. Before we get going though, uh, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor. Does it happen to you where you want to read a book, but you just don't have the time? Well, what if I could tell you that you could get the highlights of a book in just 15 minutes? Now with that, you could save time, you could save money, but still be able to learn more and to indulge more in your interests. Well, with that, I got to tell you about something I just came across, and that is the app Blinkist. Why Blinkist? Well, what it's going to give you is the best insights from over 3,000 nonfiction books, and it condenses them down to just about 15 minutes. You can read them or listen to them and basically do it podcast style. There are currently over 14 million active users, and you can also have access to these titles while you're offline. Now, a new feature is full-length audiobooks. So if you want to dive deeper, premium subscribers get special premium pricing up to 65% off the regular retail price. One of the books I definitely know I want to check out is the Peloponnesian War. Peloponnesian War is the famous war between the Athenians and the Spartans, um, the two big city-states of ancient Greece that went after each other and uh, ends up being a Spartan victory, but it'd be great to learn even more details out there. Another one um, also is the fall of Rome. Um, that is a very interesting topic because there are so many things that led to the fall of one of the greatest ancient empires. And to learn more and more perspectives about that is definitely something I'm interested in. All right, let's get to the video. <laughs> Hey kids, I was inspired to make this video while doing research on the ancient medicine man Galen. Apparently, he would often do experiments on animals in order to learn more about the body. His uh, Galen, that's awesome. Galen's one of the most famous uh, scientists in history, um, not just of Roman history either. He had done studies, for example, on things that would be considered like uh, maybe precursors to, I guess, like a steam engine. I've seen this like device he made that ended up using the power of steam to be able to kind of spin this this contraption and um, really interesting. So, all right, anyway, I can't believe I interrupted this quick. His favorite of which was the Barbary ape due to its anatomical similarity to humans. Now, when I say experiments, I don't mean push a button, get a peanut type things. <laughs> I'm talking like Yosef Mengele meets the plague dogs. He'd clamp their pee tubes shut just to watch their kidneys swell, cut their spinal cords in different places to see what went limp and what didn't, and squeeze their brains and make them go unconscious, to name a few. My initial- Okay, I just praised the dude, but then was doing horrible stuff. Why is it nothing in history you can just be black and white like that? It's got to have these <laughs> crazy immoral gray areas. Jeez. Moving on. Initial reaction was, hey, that's neat. But then, after some thought, I was like, whoa, hold the phone. In 200 <laughs> AD, you couldn't get a doorknob even. Yet, if you had the right resources, you could order a goddamn monkey. Many monkeys, in fact. By the barrelful, presumably. Alternatively, <laughs> if you were born in the right place, you could be the monkey poacher, making a living wrestling up some primates with nothing more than a net, a pokey thing, a hole in the ground, and a whole lot of ambition. So, I so yeah, the Romans, well, because uh, Galen lived in the Roman Empire, yeah, would have these connections, you know, with um, 
sub-Saharan Africa to get those types of animals that exist on there. I got to thinking, what other kind of animals did ancient Rome have access to? Apparently basically everything that lived in this part of the map. They were particularly fond of elephants, and it's easy yeah. to see why. Sure, elephants aren't that big of a deal to the average person They're today, awesome. right? You've been seeing pictures of them since you were two, big whoop. But imagine if you were a 20-year-old man who had never seen an elephant in your life. The closest sure. thing you've ever witnessed is like horses, maybe some deer now and then. You get drafted, totally you true. go out to battle, you're a little scared, but you've been trained well, you're ready. Elephant armies. Then, over the horizon, you see 20 yep. house-sized behemoths with giant tentacles sticking out of their faces, horns longer than your body sticking out <laughs> of their mouths, all screaming their weird trumpety scream, making your whole body vibrate like Whoa. Mars himself is shitting on your very noise. existence. So naturally, Rome loved to show these things off all the time, just as a display of power. Like well, remember the famous thing of uh, one way Romans would have been um, exposed to elephants was in the Punic Wars and their wars with um, Carthage um, in North Africa. Uh, they historically, both Carthage and Rome, had competed for land uh, like in the Mediterranean, um, places like the island of Sicily. Um, and one of the, the things that um, the famous general Hannibal and the Carthaginians had were elephants that they used um, for, for uh, their military. And yeah, the famous story was they marched um, um, the elephants through the Alps into, you know, Italy. And yeah, that would have been a crazy thing. And yeah, like <laughs> elephants are, they're basically like remind you of like dinosaurs or something. It's such a, a an incredible uh, different type of animal with how it's shaped and its size and its mass. I remember they had been using elephants for military use um, in ancient times and other parts of the world. Um, that was one of the things that Alexander the, uh, Alexander the Great's army encountered when they crossed the Hindu Kush into India and were um, coming across armies like that. It's an intimidating thing for sure. Like, imagine if you're going to a speech in D.C. and Trump rolls up with a pack of dragons. <laughs> You'd listen to every word he said. He's got fucking dragons. <laughs> That's what it was like seeing the emperor parade around with elephants back in the day. Of course, that wasn't the only use they had for imported animals. When they weren't being shown off in the menageries, Trump. many of the exotic beasts brought to Rome were used in shows called Venatios. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's look at the animals. Okay, so we got the elephant. We got some... Uh, ordinary deer type thing yeah <laughs> wiener wiener dog we got it we got a uh um, we got we got a dachshund down there we got a pigeon giant ants <laughs> sloth depressed looking sloth the apes they were talking about like a raccoon a banana not an animal but okay chickens ostrich slash emu cattle all right being shown off in menageries, many of the exotic beasts brought to Rome were used in shows called Venatios, which yeah. were basically like modern day bullfights, only instead of bulls, you had whatever crazy critters the state could find. Lions, mm -hmm. crocodiles, gazelles, whatever. Around 50 oh, gosh. BC, Roman statesman Pompey the Great decided to organize one such event, the feature creature of which was, you guessed it, an elephant. Unfortunately, Pompey forgot a crucial Barnum and Bailey trade secret. See, you're supposed to break the elephant's spirit before the show, not during. So the boys get to poking and the things starts freaking Aww. out, just screaming and crying yeah. and gesturing towards the audience like it was begging for mercy. Now the crowd at this kind of event was mainly composed of dirty bloodthirsty peasants, and even they were like holy shit, this is messed up. I came here for a nice family friendly disemboweling right. or two, but this, just deplorable. <laughs> then they all start crying and the whole thing just ends up being a huge mess. Okay, yeah people talk, when they hear about like gladiatorial games and the stuff that they're into that involve death of people and animals, People often will be like, man, the Romans sound like they're completely desensitized. So it's good to see that there is some kind of respect for this when you see literally an animal getting tortured and um, and an animal like, like yeah, like, uh, not the, uh, like an elephant, which they probably came out like, oh, this is a cool thing. And then you see it get tortured. Um, yeah, it would have been sad. But uh, that's one thing with, with elephants. Taming them could be pretty difficult. Elephants aren't... I mean, they've been domesticated, but they've never really been grown and raised for the purpose. They're usually caught into the wild, caught in the wild, and then domesticated. Um, and one reason why as, a, elephants have been difficult to domesticate um, is because they age so slowly. They basically age at the rate of humans. They also, when they have birth, they have like um, what, like twenty month pregnancy. It's way longer than like a human uh, pregnancy or something. Um, it's it's much longer. Maybe it's not that high, but I know it's 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 far longer, and ages quit uh, ages slowly. So it's not really useful for that. So it looks like the people that actually tame these in these other parts outside of Rome, they know how to do it. Romans, that looks like I have no idea what they're doing. 
Anyway, these types of spectacles became larger and larger as time went on. It's said that Emperor Trajan once held a yeah, Venatio lasting Trajan. 120 days, during which some 11,000 animals were killed. They Jeez. also got pretty elaborate. A lot of creativity went into keeping things fresh for the crowd. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Anytime with killed. Sam, they also got pretty you always gotta look closer at his drawings and stuff. So, elephant... Eats egg from the chicken. <laughs> Hatch in the stomach. Poo the chicken. Feed the chicken to the hippo. Hippo lay egg. Elephant comes out of the egg. And then baby comes out, kill everything with swords. So sounds like science. Elaborate. Jeez. A lot of creativity <laughs> went into keeping things fresh for the crowd. In 203 AD, they had a model of a crashed ship built inside the arena, and an assortment of 400 animals were set loose from the wreckage Whoa. and then killed. That's what we should oh. do for the next Super Bowl halftime show, honestly. Just pack every. I was about to say, they, if you didn't know, in I know the Coliseum for one, there was a time where they actually did naval battles. They have discovered, um, there'd been talk about this, but they've discovered the aqueduct connection like tunnel connections into the coliseum and in its early years they would fill up the uh, bo a bottom portion of it and they would have like little naval battles but this is a very different event every team's mascot into a decommissioned submarine then when they all run out we have the troops gun them down while the national anthem plays in the background Ooh, anyway the ingenuity geez. of the people organizing these events really knew no bounds one time they tied together a bear and a bull just to see what they'd do unfortunately all that happened was the stock market crashed also fun fact one emperor commodus is credited with the commodus. invention of a unique crescent-shaped arrow designed specifically to decapitate ostriches and watch them run around headless for a while seriously they did that so often that they needed a device to make the job easier sometimes just to shake things up they'd have the animals kill the people which was known as damnatio ad yeah, bestius this that. form of execution was typically carried out using lions but other beasts were used as well including dogs bears and at one point even an eagle although the guy was crucified first so it wasn't much of a fight so moral of the story yeah they they would yeah they were criminals usually they would do that um if i remember right the when they did the opening games of the the, the coliseum in rome um, there were it was like in three parts. They would do this each day, and I believe the the first event of the day was basically the execution of criminals, and I think that was possibly one of the ways that they did that. And then the second event was humans uh, like fighting um, against animals, and then the, the the big event that everybody wanted, the prime time event, was humans fighting humans. Story. If you ever end up in ancient Rome and you want to see some animals, you'll still have access to almost all the same creatures we see in zoos today. And the only catch is that something has to die at the end. Till next time, I'm Salmonella, and thank Jeez. you for watching. Well, here are my thoughts. Well, definitely didn't change uh, my opinions at all at the Romans, and that even though they showed, like, with the elephant, that they at least had some kind of like uh um dislike for the torturing of those animals it was still down to know in insane amounts and the video had talked about that um i mean i think i think in in some of those regions i think certain animals almost went to near almost went to near extinction because of just the mass slaughter of them for entertainment purposes um out there so didn't necessarily see like a, a bunch of the specific exotic animals but we did see some stuff that of course was not native to rome like the elephant which again was a, a very intriguing um, animal that they had interaction with with wars before but not by the general public uh, being able to see something like that so yeah the dark history of, of animal abuse in rome <laughs> definitely was validated there um but yeah and then just kind of the some of the uh pretty graphic ways that, that they dealt with these exotic animals there again for sources of entertainment so um always been something that people have criticized the romans about you know is 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 they they consider them desensitized for the way that they appreciated this type of entertainment of not just you know human on human fighting and bloodshed there but human on animal right there <laughs>
Anyway, all right. Hey, before we head out again, the original link is down below that you can check that out. There's also links to other stuff, my gaming channel on Twitch, my gaming channel on YouTube, our Discord servers down there, links to a bunch of other things too. Just want to thank once again Blinkist for sponsoring today's video. Uh, you can definitely check out stuff about Ancient Rome like I showed you before if you want to get into that. But there's a lot of different um, great summarized books over there on all types of uh, different subjects, and not just history subjects. Sometimes it's... Uh, self-help or motivation or you know just anything educational really um, you could probably find something really useful for you over at Blinkist so definitely check that down again go down below down to the description and you can take part of a great deal all right with that we'll see you next time bye